Hi guys, this is Mike, back with another Python tutorial for you. Now this time we're going to cover the subject of flow control, um, which basically is using things like if and else to control the flow of your program. Now, in addition to that, we're going to look at the various different types of comparisons that you can make so that you can choose, uh, depending on the value of things, what to do with your ifs and else. Now, uh, the first thing we're going to just take a look at is the basics um, of how to actually use if and else. So the first thing is we will obviously use the word if on our line and then we do some condition. So let's just do a simple, um, a simple one is equal to one, which is going to be true. Now, with that, the next line down is always to tab in one or use four spaces when you're using this. And the reason for that is because Python works off indentation and the indentation, uh, when it aligns correctly, tells Python that this code is part of a block of code that will be applied under this if statement. So let's just print something out like it worked and with that we should then get these three dots there and then if we press enter one more time in the Python console it prints out it worked so the basic format is that you use the word if then you do some kind of comparison then the next line down you will move in by indenting and then you'll do whatever you need to do after that. If you've got more than one line to get done after you've done your if statement, then you'll indent that too until you're finished. So let's give an example of that. So if one, we can say print it worked, but then we can come in and we can then do um, print uh, two, three times five for instance, just as an example. And then you'll notice how the character or the the carrot rather comes back to the beginning of the line. And that's because it's automatically assuming that the next statement will not be part of the inf uh, the if condition. And if you want to bring things back to normal and you want to indicate that these next lines after that are not part of the if condition, you'll want to align them back up with the if statement underneath. So there you can see you can do multiple commands underneath that if statement. So that's the basics of how to use if. What about if else? Well, let's go back to our standard if statement there. And let's say print it worked. Then let's do an else. And notice the indentation um, is the same level as the if statement. And that's important to remember that because Python will work off that indentation to know which one of these to apply. So if you've got another if statement somewhere later on within these if statements that you've started with, Python will use that indent indentation that you use to indicate which ones belong to each other. And notice also the end of the lines with the colon, and that's important to note as well. That's basically how Python knows how to end that particular command. So we've done the else. Uh, any commands that need to take place underneath this else condition need to be indented. So if we print, it didn't work. we press enter again that should go through the if and I'm expecting that it'll say it worked but we'll change the condition and we'll use the other end of the scale which is not or exclamation equals it means if one is not equal to one then do this next line and of course, 
we'll keep the code the same as it was before so we can predictably expect what the outcome would be so in this case I'm expecting it to say it didn't work because one if one is not equal to one it should print it worked else it should print it didn't work and of course in this case one is definitely equal to one so we're expecting the else clause to to happen so we have a third condition which is basically um, the else if condition so if we go for something like one is not equal to one and we print uh, it worked we can go l if whoops l if two is equal to two then print it was two and then we can also add in an else after that so what should happen here is we should do the comparison with the if first of all so this section whoops this section here gets examined if that's true then this line will execute then this line here gets examined and this new condition is examined and if that's true then this line code here should get executed and if neither of those ended up being true we finally get that option that is executed there so in this case I'm expecting 2 to equal 2 so we should get the L if line or the L L if block of code to uh, execute so here we go and as you can see that was the case if we go back a bit and we do the whole redo of that but this time if we negate that and make that so that it won't be true we can see there that finally our else condition should be the one Execute, executes in this case because the if one equals is not equal to one will not be true and the l if two is not equal to two will not be true as well so those lines of code that are featured inside of those particular blocks won't be executed and the last option the else option should get executed and there you go so these comparisons that we're that we're doing here so we've got one equals one comes back true in other cases one equals two comes back false so that's the most obvious and easiest one to understand one not equal to one is basically saying um, this will be true if the other one is not equal to the other one so in the case of one not being equal to one that comes back false because one is actually equal to one if we said one not equal to two that's true then we have other comparisons so one is greater than one becomes false one greater than two is false However, two whoops, greater than one is true. So we can check the levels of things. Now we can make it make that even more accurate because um, say we were doing uh, floating point numbers, for instance, then we could have uh, whoops two point zero one so two point zero one false 
if we then create that 2.01 that's false however we could then say if 2.01 is the threshold or a value that we can go by and then we want this to trigger we could then use the equal sign to make this greater than or equal to 2.1 uh, 2.01 and that will then become true so we can then set um, almost like a, a gate um, a gateway value that will allow us to to say whenever such and such really re reaches this particular level that's when this should become true so that would be interesting if we kind of built ourselves a, soft, a software thermometer or something like that that was measuring the temperature we might want to use that kind of condition and the same is the case for when you use less than so you can then say less than or equal to true so then if we set our threshold of that to be there that is definitely less than if we go one above then it's no longer true so there's a variety of different comparisons that you can do and in later uh, tutorials I'm going to just demonstrate how you can then set things up to be um, comparing between things like objects now what am I what do I mean by objects um, in later tutorials we're going to cover the subject of classes and classes can have values of their own um, and sometimes values can be complex and needed extra calculation and it is possible to set things up so that a class can be compared to another class of the same type and that's to give a true or false value and that will be very handy later on um, when we're covering subjects like um, is a, a three-dimensional vector greater than each other because um, those are a bit more complex and involve having some calculations done that is kind of outside the realms of what Python co covers naturally and we can then set that up and make these comparisons so just to bring that back into the context of what we've just been discussing here with these comparisons if we do uh, if 2.02 .02 is greater than or equal to 2.01 we can finally say print it failed else print it's over the threshold value it failed because 2.02 .02 is over 2.01 however if we change that to this we can say under and there you go so as you can see by using these different types of combinations of comparisons we can achieve different things so if you're wanting to test if something's true or false then you know doing a comparison on an integer or a value of something like that can be done but if you want to measure if something's gone over a threshold the greater than or equal to kind of comparisons would be more useful to you okay so that's the end of this tutorial on flow control and using if else and if and elf <laughs> else if and the different comparisons that you can make i hope you enjoyed this and if you did then click the like button and if you'd like to know more about the python and get a, a notification when the new tutorials are out then please click the subscribe button and we'll send you one straight away thanks for watching